Hi, most of you might be knowing uh, Jay Bansal. For those who don't know Jay Bansal, let me introduce him one more time. So, Jay Bansal is a AAR2 ranker in GATE 2019. Then he has got uh, his MTech from IIT Bombay and he is a 9.93 pointer. And then he is currently working in Google, so on large, long, large language models. So, now in this video, Jay will explain you about. So one more thing, why am I introducing Jay Bansal is because he is going to teach. So he is going to teach Gate DA completely, and I will also be there in the course. But primarily, he will be teaching the entire course. So now, Jay Bansal will explain you what is the plan, what is the syllabus, how we are going to upload the videos, how we are going to solve the doubts. Everything Jay Bansal will explain. Over to you, Jay. Thanks, thanks, sir. <clears throat> so hi everyone, uh, sir so, like has already introduced me and like right now I'm working as an ML engineer at Google. So yeah, I know like uh, bits and pieces of like the entire course. We use this every day in our like uh, day to day life at Google. So and one more thing is he will give the industry perspective of the to the course. He will bring that industry perspective to the course. It will not be only theoretical. He will also talk about how it is applied in the real industry as of now. Yeah. So yeah, this is the new paper like introduced by ISC Bangalore. This time ISC is like conducting the gate exam 2024 and they have added a new paper which everyone was waiting for which is data science and artificial intelligence with the code DA. So a lot of colleges right now already have a bachelor's course uh, like they have introduced a bachelor's course in data science and AI. So you might like here like like in almost every college even in IITs we, we can get a BTEC or BSc done in AI. So like this is an initiative and like now from now we will have MTech courses also specialized in AI only and the admissions to those courses will be through DA paper. And uh, one special thing like uh, any branch student like uh, so you can go to gate website and see about two paper modes. So you can write you can actually write two gate papers. So even if you were preparing for gate CS only this year, you can still write DA also. So you can actually write two gate papers. Any student like CS, uh, electrical, mechanical, civil engineering, you can write uh, DA as your second paper and you can have a career in uh, artificial intelligence. So yeah, this is the syllabus. It's very small syllabus. Like it's the smallest syllabus of all. Like you can see any syllabus. Like mechanical is huge, computer science is huge. But this is the smallest syllabus. So you will need the like like least amount of time to prepare for it. And uh, like if you love math, uh, like this will be easy. Like this is all about ma about maths. You can see like like large portion of the syllabus is only on maths. So like almost fifty percent of the syllabus is maths. So we yeah, are and like they, they will ask a lot of questions on probability, linear algebra, calculus because these are all basics coming to any ML, ML algorithm. So you we actually learn this and apply all this information in machine learning and AI. And these two you can see are directly from gate computer science. This is maths. And these two are only ML and AI. Like these are the only things which you need to learn new. So this is about like 25-30% of the syllabus, that's all. So if you are doing gate CS, already you are learning all this. You just need to learn a bit more to crack uh, gate DA. So and also I will like, like in this course, we will be covering all of this from scratch. We will be discussing every concept on YouTube on this channel. So I'll be starting with probability and stats. I'll, I'll follow the syllabus and cover each each and every bit of it. And uh, like uh, so one video will be released every day on this YouTube channel uh, like st uh, like starting tomorrow and uh, we will be covering like uh, we will be starting with counting PNC and actually you have learned most of it in gate CS a few things are introduced more so these uh, confidence intervals Z test like and uh, chi square test these are introduced like these are new topics coming to gate T uh, DA. So and since I told you like since maths is uh, most of the uh, part in gate DA syllabus so you can expect more questions from maths generally like in uh, gate computer science 15 to 20 marks portion come from mathematics right but here you can expect around 40 marks that's what I see so yeah. So anyways, like we will cover everything needed because we need this basics. You need to be very thorough in these. Uh, otherwise, you will like have a uh, difficult time learning ML and AI. 
so we'll cover probability and stats linear algebra calculus uh, programming d and algo uh, this is exactly same as gate cs uh, the only thing is uh, the questions will be from python so this had to be introduced because most of the ml algorithms are easier to write in python programming language so like ml work is done all in python i work on python every day so i like used to work in c c++ while i was in college but after m tech it's all python so yeah like uh, the questions will be from python and you can expect that even the dsa questions uh, like the code snippets will be given in python only and database is like entirely from gate cs and these two are the like new additions and we will be having uh, we will be covering everything in warehousing some topics are added yeah actually yes so uh, so this is like mainly because uh, so why actually they have added databases in the syllabus so uh, you might have heard of the thing called big data right and ml models why do we write see uh, you can like if you have only if you have a google sheet let's say with 10 entries one person can manually sit and do all the ml like think about it like if you have 10 entries i can sit and tell you all the insights okay, this is the anomaly this is something like you can actually humans can do all the ml that's what ml is you are giving human mind to a machine right so but like why are we writing algorithms because the data is huge uh, one person cannot sit and see 10 million entries right think about google search like there are like 5 billion google searches i guess like um, we are like in a day so you cannot manually go and see every search like and and like have personalized uh, a search ads or anything right so you need ml in that like you need to uh, actually access large amounts of data and this is the first step in any ml project you need to store the data and that's where we need uh, large data warehouses and uh, <coughs> database management so this is important and we will learn this as well compare it with the uh, gate computer science syllabus yeah uh, so yeah this is gate cs syllabus it's a two page syllabus <laughs> and uh, this is the only maths part if you see right and even in gate da we don't have uh, all the topics of discrete maths we don't have uh, set theory monoids groups graphs we don't have that right because that is very core to gate computer science we only have like counting see uh, ml is all about counting you have lo lots of data you want to count Key, like how many entries do I have? You have to analyze the data, you have to clean the data, and then you have to write ML algorithms. So even like this, this is the only part in, uh, of mathematics in gate CS, and uh, some of it is added in gate DA. Cool, and uh, so digital logic, logic is completely removed. So all subjects which are core to computer science, they are not in DA. So you don't need to learn them if you're writing just gate DA, and if you want to have a career in uh, AI only. So yeah, programming and data structures, like these concepts will be required. These are same, like all the concepts are same in uh, DA and uh, CS. The only difference is here you learn programming in C and in DA you will have to run, uh, learn programming in Python. Both are very basic languages. If you know C, learning Python will be very trivial, trust me, like you'll just need uh, like, like, like if, you, if you know C, it's, it will be like uh, 100x simpler to learn Python. So it, the most difficult thing to learn as a programmer is to learn the first language, okay? So yeah, that will be easy. And uh, algorithms are also there in uh, gate DA, but again, like primary language used will be Python. TOC, CD are completely removed. Uh, these are again core to gate CS. Uh, OS, like uh, one of the most difficult subjects, not in gate DA. Databases is there and a slight uh, like few additions are there in warehousing since the syllabus is short You can expect the committee to go deep while asking questions slightly deeper in every subject because there are only six subjects, right? Uh, here like they ask questions uh, uh, You don't have to go that deep while learning but in gate DA you might expect that the questions might be like from depth and uh, CN is completely removed so yeah, this is the difference between gate CS and uh, uh, DA and yeah, we will be covering this entire uh, syllabus. So Jay, my question is, 
now that you have two gate papers mm-hmm. which one do you suggest that people should go for or what will be mm-hmm. your opinion mm-hmm. or what you would go for yeah so uh, so he is a ar second ranker in gate computer science now let's ask him whether he want to go for gate ea or gate cs if he is a student yeah so yeah i actually wrote this paper i know everything about this paper like i love computer science i love like even the theory part of computer science i is still i like sometimes i wonder why i am not applying the knowledge i learned in computer architecture and os it's like very trivial to know all that and i feel like sometimes i feel ki uh, data science and ai is too much like uh narrow na- like like it's for like it's very niche as compared to like the entire cs syllabus but that's okay actually like the technology right now is moving in that direction and people need not know about let's say virtual memory you don't care like you just read to net ml algorithms in industry right i don't apply the concepts of os uh computer architecture like while i'm working right now but uh like i love cs i have a bias <laughs> since i have learned all this but yeah see uh, if you are a cs engineer you will learn all this anyway in your uh, curriculum right so it's better to prepare for cs and da both uh, so like if like it doesn't matter like uh, those who have their btech degree only in ai don't learn all this okay it's a waste of time then but if you are having a bachelor's degree in let's say electrical engineering uh, why not write gate uh, e and da both right because you are learning those concepts anyway in your in your curriculum but so you want people to prepare for two papers yeah actually yes okay yeah. so that way it, they will increase the chances of getting, getting selected yeah okay and trust me like the seats for da will increase drastically like every iit will have a mtech in ai like in 2 3 years like like quote me on this like you will have a mtech in ai in all iits and nits in in coming 3 years so like you will have lots of seats people from different branches will come and uh, they will they will write mtech in da and they will do masters in da okay so jay my question is many people would love to contact you because obviously you are at google they yeah. would like to talk to you and know or get take guidance from you yeah so how do you think that you can guide these students or how can students contact you where can they to contact you on which yeah. platform yeah yeah one thing like i am on linkedin so you can contact me on linkedin like it i'm very easy so, to find so he only said that he will be available on linkedin <laughs> so i am going to put the linkedin uh, id yeah. of uh, account of jay balsal in the uh, this call, uh, description of this Yeah. you can you can ping him on linkedin it is his responsibility to respond now you yeah. can chat that but but don't ask for reference uh, if you are asking for reference make sure you have watched the entire course like <laughs> so okay. so he is saying that people who have watched the entire course you yeah. will refer them to google yeah, if yeah. you have watched the entire course then you are definitely going to refer them yeah i will definitely refer you like that's not an issue so Jay, how will you solve the subject doubts yeah. let's say i have a doubt i have watched your videos mm-hmm. and now i have a doubt in uh, ml mm-hmm. then how can i where can i count how can i ask you the doubts how can yeah. i solve it yeah so uh, that's how we are planning the course so we will be putting as i told you we will be like uploading videos every day so like uh, you will get 6 to 7 videos every week from from this content from the syllabus and once a week or once in 10 days uh like i will will go live on on the youtube channel and we can have doubt solving session and uh, so again this is a commitment so he is saying that once every week or every 10 days yeah. he is going to come live yeah. and you can ask all your doubts and can they ask any doubt in computer science yeah. or related to yeah yeah any anything anything you are writing gate cs come and ask doubts if i don't remember i'll i'll, I'll answer your doubt in the next video but i will do it Okay, so that's so we are going to contact yeah. contact live sessions yeah. so now jay now that uh, i think this time when you came back to teaching i think mm-hmm. this is going to be a full i mean uh, lifelong thing yeah 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 you are like, going to be yeah. teaching lifelong yeah, yeah it was a so like dream like uh, teaching with alongside rbi sir like i i was a student if you don't know i like studied entire this syllabus from him so yeah like back then when i was learning i never thought ki i'll be here and like it's <laughs> like yeah, i want to be here so what are your plans like uh, let us say you have completed this particular course <laughs> this course is over it will be over obviously in uh, uh, maybe one year's time or six months time yeah. it will be over <laughs> then after that what is your plan in teaching like what do you want to teach students what so, are the other courses that you want yeah. to bring to the channel so seeing the rapid growth in computer science i am like 
like very sure we will never get out of things to teach <laughs> in computer science so every 2 3 years 2 uh, 3 years technology will evolve we will have new things yeah. and uh, the like so the thing is to keep this channel updated uh, up to date with the new technologies whatever is coming okay so like whether it be in cyber security right now like ml field is in boom so we will try to have more and more projects and uh, like coverage in ml area so my expertise is in deep learning and uh, image processing so i will try to start a course in image processing and uh, i did my master thesis in medical image computing so i will try to like have a few projects done in that area as well so he is saying that again this is a commitment he is saying that he will do lot of projects so after mm -hmm. this course you are going to see lot of projects and also i forgot to mention one thing about jerman sir so he is icpc 38 right 39 yeah 39, 39 yeah. icpc 39 is super difficult mm -hmm. so getting there in competitive programming is mm -hmm. very difficult so he is very good in c++ and he is very good in competitive programming so let us ask him whether he wants to teach C++ and competitive programming also. Yeah, so it all now depends on bandwidth. But yeah, like I'll I'd love to do like DSA course. Anyways, like uh, I guess Sir is planning to do a DSA course on this channel. Yeah. So we will like uh, do like the code for every problem in like try, try to do it in all the languages like Python, C++, Java, so that whoever knows whatever language they can just understand the code. So yeah. So, so there are a lot of commitments from Jaiman sir <laughs> now. Now you can actually comment and then ask him whenever you feel that he is not doing it. Okay. Yeah, so do sure. write comments. He is reading comments also. So mm -hmm. he has. I will be giving him the access to the channel. So he will reply to the comments whenever there are comments uh, related to uh, his subject. So in general, any computer science subject, he will be getting the access. So he will go through it. And so I am going to put his LinkedIn. Uh, in the uh, description so you can con start contacting him and get him get his views on how to prepare and all so jay uh, can you tell me about what are the projects kinds of projects that some few examples not mm -hmm. uh, so any specific things any few examples about mm -hmm. what projects you would love to cover after this course yeah so uh, ml is an interesting field like it's uh, as i told you before right like we are trying to mimic human brain in a machine so what does human brain do think about like anything like see uh, a small kid like grows up and starts walking so like if uh, there is a process complex pro process involved in that and in computer science we call it reinforcement learning okay right so we like try to stand up we fall down right like that's how a kid grows so that is what reinforcement learning is like what actions to take and what not to take so like ml like ml projects are everywhere you just need to see clearly so like right now world cup is going on so ml like like everyone does this right in every cricket match uh, like who will win they try to predict prediction and you see uh, there is a score predictor in the bottom of the screen ki like since this team is playing that way after 15 overs they have scored so and so how much score will be there at the end so that is done, done through ml right it's not statistical like think about it they are not previously i remember like 10 days back they didn't had a score predictor what they did was they just showed you ki if they keep scoring on the same run rate same run rate yeah. like how much score will they get yeah. but now yes, but, yes. but now they say it score predictor it is predictor it is an ml model so based on how many like players are left what players are left what ground it is what bowlers how many overs are left for each bowler they predict like what the score might be so that's all you can do and uh, like that's what we will be doing like in like like that's the that that's what we will be building on the so channel. so will you get the data of related to cricket and yeah, yeah, we can, projects yeah yeah we can do that we will do that like definitely it's very easy to get hold on data right now like it's everywhere on web so we will scrape data from like uh, like open source data data uh, data sets and we will uh, build ml model ml models on that so we both are really excited to teach this course so jay will be doing most of it so we are very excited about this course and i hope that you are also excited about this course and let's begin the videos okay thank you thank you hi if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits universities better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% so 
but all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your master's in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building. And then LOR guidance. And GRE and English test assistance. And education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do, visa assistance, mock visa interviews, and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join Game of Visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 Okay, thank you.